Nothing I know. Yes. How do you carry your faith when members of the church are not there? How do you portray yourself as a Christian in your home, in your family gatherings at work? There is only one thing upon which you rest everything. And without that one thing, commitments will fail. Your loyalties will vanish. As a parent, your love for your children sometimes will drive you to courage that wouldn't have for someone else. It will cause you to sacrifice that you wouldn't for someone else because there is that one thing, that inbound, innate love and protection that you have. It motivates you when logic doesn't even apply. That is what we call mothers, and that is why huh, to take a mother's evidence, <laughs> you have to look at it critically. Because a mother will always, always be in support of her children. You are ready to make any sacrifice for them. The same is true for a Christian. The same is true for a Christian. We do what we do as followers of Jesus Christ because of one thing. There is one thing. I want you to seek and find that one thing. Uh, in the Bible reading today, we are going to be looking at a young man who was born blind in the book of John chapter 9. He was born blind from birth. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. He was born blind from birth. Jesus healed his blindness. This man was brought before a group of Pharisees to explain why he is no longer blind. He told them, that man, Jesus, gave me my sight. Immediately, the Pharisees' group was split into two. Because some Pharisees believed that this man that healed on the Sabbath day is not from God. Another group believed that no good thing can come from anyone who did not know God. So they are split. One believes it's not from God, the other believes it's from God. So they called the parents to come and they asked the question, is this your son? Yes, was the answer. Was he born blind? Yes, he was born blind. How come he now sees? They are replied, yes, he now sees, but I don't know why he's seeing now. He's of age. You will have to ask him because they knew who had given him sight. They knew it was Jesus. But because they did not want to be kicked out of the synagogue, they didn't want to say something that might cause embarrassment and ridicule. So they said, he's of age. Ask him. Yes. The
Amen. If you are timid about faith, timid about speaking of Christ, timid of your testimony, I want you to look into your heart today and ask, is there that one undeniable truth about my relationship with Christ? Do you even have a relationship with Christ? Did you know him? Is there something that I cannot deny? Is there something in my experience of salvation that I know is true? Is there something in God's deliverance of me from a situation that I know is divine? Is there something that I can look to in my life and say, I know the touch of God was upon me just as it was upon this blind man. If there is that one thing that you know, you will become an outspoken Christian. You will have no problem sharing your faith and taking the risk in risking the ridicule. If there is this one thing that you know that you can look back to and place your faith on that rock that you can stand on. There is no time. It is easy to share your faith. Amen. What did I say? There is no time. It is easy to share your faith. You just have to be sure of what you know. Amen. Children of God, there's a solid rock to stand on. And that rock is the rock that God has touched your life. You will be able to look to that and go to that when times are hard. When the questions are tough, then you can say, one thing I do know, one thing I do know, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was in this situation, but I've been delivered. That one thing is what motivates, what drives believers. That one thing brought you here this morning. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Paul says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ, Jesus Christ, has already laid hold of me. Paul was saying, I have not reached the blessedness of life being a Christian. My life is not the best. Uh, but I am hanging on, I am pressing on, that I may lay hold of that which Christ has also laid hold of me. Why are you here? Why did Christ have to call you? Do you know many, many people that are out there that are not chosen, that are not called? Do you know the reason why you were saved? Verse 13 of Philippians chapter 3. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize. Press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ. I know one thing. <laughs> Brethren, I'm talking about me personally. I know one thing. I know that I have received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I know that the Lord has his hand on my life. I know that he leads and guides, that he directs, and that he has purposes and plans for me. I know that he's called me to be his own. This one thing I know must be passed down to my children. My faith must be passed down to my children. It must be passed down to my grandchildren. My entire household must hear of it. My friends and my loved ones must hear it. 
This one thing I know must be preached at Christ Life Church Chicago. Give it up for Jesus. I don't know it all. But one thing I know, God is real. He has touched me. He leads me and guides me. He is the answer to all of our questions. He lives within me and he has changed me. Let's look at the example of Mary and Martha. They were preparing a meal when Jesus came to their home. Martha is in the kitchen ready to cook a meal. Mary, on the other hand, is sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him. And this we can see in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Now it happened. As they went, that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. 39, and she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Verse 40, but Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care? That my sister has left me to serve alone, therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. There are going to be many banquets to serve meals at. Is that correct? Hello? I know at least this church, we have been in so many banquets. Yesterday, there were two banquets, right? We are going to have another one today, right? And there are still going to be more and more banquets that are coming. Already, we have some that are slated already that we are all warming up to. Is that correct? There are still going to be many banquets to serve meals. There will be many dinners to cook for. But Mary knew she had been touched by Jesus. And she knew that that was her savior. She knew that one thing, that the one before whom she sat was her master and her Messiah. She will use every opportunity she could to study and to learn from him. Mary knew one thing. And that was why she was not in the kitchen helping Martha. Because she does not get to see Jesus every day. And it is time to study at his feet. And that is more important than food. Brethren, is being in the presence of God more important to you than anything? Let me tell you, there is no party I go. Even the one I was involved in my own party. I have to be in church the second day. And I have to come on time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Whether it's by pushing or by dragging. This one thing I know, as long as there is breath in me, I must live for Jesus Christ. Let's go to, back to that young man that was healed of blindness in John chapter 9, verse 25. After he said, one thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, why? This is a marvelous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God, and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Verse 34. They don't want to hear his sermon. They don't want to hear what he was saying. They answered and said to him, 
you are completely born in sins. And that is the same question that was asked by the disciple in John chapter 9, verse 1. When they saw this blind man begging, they asked Jesus, who was blind? Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Why is this man blind? It must be because of, of a sin that is committed by his parents. Because they have this teaching that some children are cursed uh, from the womb, and this can cause blindness. That was their belief, and that was why they asked Jesus. Brethren, with Christ, no one can stand against you. Hello? If Christ is on your side, who can be against you? The Pharisees were against this man. They want to change his story. They want to change his testimony. But this man know for sure that uh -uh, before I can't even see your face, what are you telling me? This one thing I know. <laughs> I was blind. <laughs> now I see. Are you so sure of your faith? Do you know whom you follow? Hello? If they ask you about Jesus, about your relationship with him, if you are under stress, and somebody is pointing something at you to harm you, what are you going to say about the man Jesus? Do you know him? Yes, this man was cast out. What happens to him next? Jesus is the Messiah who comes to the outcast. He will never leave us alone. He says, lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. He is the Messiah that reaches to those that the religious world has cast to the side. That the religious world finds unacceptable. In verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? Hmm. Jesus asked him, Do you see me as the Messiah? Verse 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? He doesn't even know <laughs> that Jesus is the Messiah. But the one thing he knew, he will not let go. That I was blind, now I can see. And Jesus knew that he needs to know better. When we crave to follow the Lord, when we crave to serve him, he will open our understanding. The Bible says he opened their understanding and they are able to understand the scriptures. On the way to Emmaus, the disciples, they don't even know it was him. But after he opened their understanding, they were able to understand the scriptures. So this man does not even know who Jesus was. The only thing, one thing he knew, he held fast onto that. He was blind, now you can see. And Jesus Christ was asking him a question. Do you believe in the Son of God? What was his answer? Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. May you worship Jesus all the days of your life. May we not worship any other God beside him. A man who lost faith in a synagogue but gained faith and life in Christ. Here is a man who lost standing in his community but gained vision in Christ. Because you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to lose some friends. Some family members are not going to like you anymore. But because of one thing that you know, you are going to stay put and hold fast unto Jesus, even unto your last breath. In Exodus chapter 2, we see Jochebed. Why did Pharaoh sought to kill her baby? Jochebed is the mother of Moses. 
This woman was filled with faith and courage. She put Moses in a basket and he committed him into the hands of God. It was through the courage of Jacob that Moses lived and grew up, knowing this one thing, that he truly belonged to Yahweh, who had chosen him to deliver Israel. How did he know? Because after Pharaoh's daughter has gotten Moses out of water and he did not, he is now looking for somebody to help her nurse that child. He, she was going to adopt him as her son. <laughs> and by the providence of God, Mary's sister was standing around looking to what is going to happen to her brother. And when the lady was asking, who is going to help me? How can I find a sitter to help me raise this child? Mary's, Mary's sister, uh, Moses' sister quickly came out. And said, I know somebody who can help you. And who was that? That was Jochebed, the mother of Moses. And as this woman was nursing and being paid for raising her own child, she was not neglecting her responsibility. She was teaching Moses about the God of Israel. She was making him to understand the promises of God. For the Israelites, Moses was growing in Pharaoh's palace, learning about the God of Israel. This is our job as mothers. Moms are the front of teaching our children about the word of God and modeling Christian ways in our homes to our children. Before your child will listen to any sermon and believe it. They want to see the life of their mom who says, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Is your life modeling Christ? Can your children see Jesus in you? Christian mothers should know the only one, Jesus Christ, whom they must introduce and model to their children and everyone around them. What is your one thing, sisters? What is your mission in this life as a mother? God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege to be mothers. Thank you for our fathers in the house. Help us to model Jesus to our children, to our friends, and to the whole world in the name of Jesus. That this one thing we know, this Jesus, the Savior of our soul, the Lord that has saved us from the shackle of sin, this one that we know that we are going to share with our children and all our loved ones and every life that comes in contact with us, the grace to carry out this assignment, Father, grant it to us in the name of Jesus. And when the roles are called you up yonder, Daddy, when we are marching through the pearly gates, the mothers, they will see their children coming along to the praise and glory of your name. Thank you, Jesus. Our entire household will worship and serve you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day.